In organic reaction mechanisms, we have the reactant structures, the structures of any reactive intermediates, curved arrows showing how all the structures interconvert as electrons move and bonds are made and broken, and we have what we might call reaction or step arrows between each set of structures, basically illustrating the progress of the reaction, step one, step two, step three, etc. And an important thing to note about each step arrow is that it may be reversible or irreversible. So for example, in the mechanism that we see on this slide, the first two steps are what we call reversible. We draw them with forward and reverse arrows, showing that the forward and reverse reactions proceed at appreciable rates, for reasons we'll touch on in a second. Same thing's happening in the second step. A reversible arrow indicates that both the forward and reverse reactions occur, and in fact, in some cases where we see these reversible arrows, the step may not even be thermodynamically favored in the forward direction. We're just taking advantage of the fact that it occur occurs to a small extent, which the, the products of which are then dragged forward through to the products via an irreversible step later. So here, for example, it may actually not be thermodynamically favorable to lose water and produce a carbocation. But in the next step, we have an irreversible step with a forward arrow only indicating that no back reaction occurs. We're going from a less stable to a more stable carbocation. That's going to occur only in the forward direction because this is a heavily favored step. And then finally at the end we have another reversible arrow here. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of irreversible versus reversible step or reaction arrows and talk about how we think about when to write these. This is something that you'll want to pay attention to as you're learning new mechanisms. When you're actually drawing mechanisms on homework exams and that kind of thing, this is the sort of thing that can vary by instructor, whether it's important to show arrows as reversible or irreversible. I tend to play a little fast and loose with it, but it is worth noting because you will see a difference in mechanisms in your textbook between reversible and irreversible steps, and this can turn out to matter a great deal. In particular, there are reactions that would not be thermodynamically favorable overall without an irreversible step somewhere in the mix there. In an elementary step, a reversible arrow between the reactants and products indicates a step that can proceed backwards, whose reverse reaction has a non-negligible rate, more or less. From a chemical equilibrium point of view, this corresponds to a step whose equilibrium constant is close to 1 or less than 1, where we don't have complete generation of the products of that step. They're only generated to a partial extent or there's close to a 50-50 mixture of the reactants and products at equilibrium. On the other hand, a step that is heavily favored in the forward direction is drawn using an irreversible arrow, indicating that the reverse reaction is negligible. K is much, much, much greater than 1. The equilibrium constant is much greater than 1. The products are heavily favored and so as soon as the reactants react, they're gone and there's no going backwards. In the remainder of this video we're going to highlight some examples of reversible and irreversible steps with some of the labels and general ideas, general patterns in electron flow we've seen previously. So here for example we have nucleophilic attack or nucleophilic addition. In the first step here we have water, a neutral nucleophile, adding to a carbocation. The, pr the reactant carbocation has positive charge, of course, and the product has positive charge. And this H2O plus is a good leaving group. In fact, water would love to depart and form a neutral molecule since oxygen doesn't love having that positive charge. On the other hand, water is a decent nucleophile. And so this reaction proceeds to the forward direction to some extent because water is a decent nucleophile but can also proceed in the reverse direction because H2O plus is a good leaving group. So this is an example of a reversible step whose equilibrium constant is close to one and may even favor the carbocation. An irreversible example of nucleophilic attack or nucleophilic addition is shown at the bottom of this slide. Here we have negative charge among the reactive molecules and it starts on a carbon and it ends on an oxygen. Now in terms of stability trends here and thinking about electronegativity, this is worth pausing the video and thinking through. Where is the negative charge more stable, carbon or oxygen? Hopefully based on electronegativity arguments, you said that the negative charge is more stable 
on oxygen. This makes the now neutral CH3 a very bad leaving group and makes the negatively charged CH3 an awesome nucleophile. So elimination, which would correspond to the reverse of this process, the elimination of CH3 minus occurs to a negligible degree, basically not at all. We're not going to generate a C minus from a much, much more stable O minus. On the other hand, this nucleophilic addition step, which, which shifts negative charge from a highly unstable carbon to a much more stable oxygen, is going to be heavily favored in the forward direction and is written irreversibly like this as a result. Again, in the context of particular reactions, you'll learn how stability trends specifically apply to that particular reaction. This particular one you will see in organic chemistry too, and there the stability difference between a carb anion and an oxy anion is hugely important to whether these kinds of additions are reversible or, as in this case, irreversible. Departure of a leaving group from a neutral molecule is quite frequently reversible, particularly when the leaving group thus generated is still a good nucleophile. We'll have much more to say about what makes a good nucleophile later in the course. For the time being, take my word for it that bromide is a pretty good nucleophile. This means that the reverse of this step, nucleophilic attack of bromide on the carbocation, let's draw a quick curved arrow showing that, this kind of nucleophilic attack going in the reverse direction does occur to a significant degree. On the other hand, Br- minus is a good leaving group. Bromine or bromide is a good leaving group. This means that the forward reaction also occurs to an appreciable degree. So here again we have a situation where the forward and reverse reactions are both occurring at non-negligible rates, and so this is a reversible elementary step and likely favors the neutral reactant over the charged products. In mechanisms where this step occurs, the carbocation will go on and do something ultimately irreversible to drive the reaction to products. The third example here is proton transfer, and we've talked a great deal about what makes a proton transfer favorable or not, reversible and irreversible, and you can think about this in terms of pKa differences with the favored side corresponding to the weaker acid or the weaker base. So for example, in this first case, we've got quite a small pKa difference between terbutanol on the product side and water on the reactant side, only about two and a half pKa units. This is why this arrow is a reversible reaction arrow, because the reverse proton transfer occurs at a non-negligible rate, and at equilibrium, although the products will be favored, not by much, only by about two and a half orders of magnitude. In the second case, we go from negative charge on a carb anion, carbon, to negative charge on an oxygen. And so we could think about this in terms of pKa's, and that's done for the conjugate acids, 15.7 for the reactant acid and 50, whopping 50 for the product acid. This shows that the products will be favored to a massive degree, something like 35 orders of magnitude here. We could also think about stability trends in the anions, arguing that this will be a much stronger base, negative charge on the less electronegative carbon, and this will be a much weaker base on the product side. So as usual for acid-base reactions, the weaker acid and weaker base appear on the favored side, and because of this massive pKa difference, this is an irreversible proton transfer. There's no going back once negative charge is on that oxygen. So far we've focused on using stability trends and things like pKa to rationalize whether a step will be reversible or irreversible, but there are cases where we're, the, we're kind of subverted by the outcome. And there's something else that can go on to make a step irreversible other than just producing a more stable, say, cation or anion. And this has to do with Le Chatelier's principle and Le Chatelier effects, which can drive an elementary step toward products even when we're making a less thermodynamically stable, for example, anion. So for instance, in this step, we go from negative charge on this nitrogen to negative charge on a carbon on the product side. If we think about electronegativity, the negative charge is very clearly less stable on the carbon than it is on the nitrogen. And yet, the reaction's drawn with an irreversible arrow in the forward direction. What's going on here? We appear to be generating a less stable carbanion irreversibly. What's going on is we are also generating 
N2 gas in the course of this reaction. And that N2 gas will bubble out of the reaction mixture, out of the reaction flask, and out into the atmosphere. And in so doing, we're removing a product of this step from the system, from the reaction flask. And so, in true Le Chatelier fashion, this will cause the formation of more product as N2 is lost. So these Le Chatelier effects, typically involving loss of a gas, into carbon dioxide, something like this, can drive a reaction or a step in the forward direction and make it irreversible. Loss of a small molecule that forms a separate phase or is deliberately removed by something like distillation can also do this, and this is things like alcohols and water, which can be deliberately removed from reaction mixtures to pull otherwise reversible or unfavorable steps toward the product side.